everybody. That isn't going to my slides. Right, we may have to do this without slides. Uh, no, they're not there. Anyway, not to worry. Right. Well, first, Michael, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, very good to be here uh, again at the Land Warfare uh, Conference. Um, uh, Mark, congratulations to you um, on your first. Nice to be serving alongside a very old friend uh, and comrade from uh, Afghanistan and other, and other theatres. I apologize that I can only be with you for about 45 minutes. Um, uh, it's nice to hear all those uh, kind words about my background and biography. But one of the things uh, that you learn as an advisor is that you have a boss, uh, and my boss requires my attention in about an hour's time, and I'm not going to be late uh, for her. Um, <laughs> I'll leave you to judge which of the two hers uh, that I am referring to. Uh, uh, but both of them, uh, both of them um, uh, admire punctuality and expect it uh, in their subordinates. So I do apologize, I won't be able to uh, be here. I would have liked to have stayed. Uh, stayed for longer. Um, I was going to run through a series of slides, but I'll obviously just try and do it, uh, do it uh, without. And I was going to try and cover just a few topics to stimulate questions, and then the panel, I'm sure, will, uh, will pick it up. Do you want me to have another go and just see if the right slides are in here, Michael? Or, or I don't know where they are there. Is the moment? No. No, okay, not to worry. Okay, uh, Mark, if somebody gives me an indication at the back that they are running, I'll let you know. I'll clatter through it. Right, the first slide, imagine this. <laughs> the other thing is, I use the slides as a prompt rather than notes, so I really am doing this totally off the top of my head now. Um, the first slide is a map. So imagine this, it's a world map and it's got a whole load of graphics on it, and what we try to do in that is set out the national security challenges as we see them for, a country, for the United Kingdom and for countries of our scale and position. And I just want to uh, set those out uh, very briefly for you. Um, first, uh, the, the first uh, Do you is... Do want to try them now, Mark? Sorry? Do you want to try them now? Should we try now? Oh, now the clicker isn't working. <laughs> okay. I'm so glad this is not my land warfare conference. <laughs> Can you... Right. Can you advance them from up there? Can you advance them from up there? Rather than from the mouse here? And don't worry, okay. We'll, we'll okay. press on. No, sorry, we'll Mark, press sorry. on. You had William Haig up talking about cannabis this morning. I mean, really, you've, you know, you, you've, you've had the whole lot. Uh, so, first slide, map of the world. Lots of challenges on it. Three big challenges, three big opportunities for this country as we navigate our way through uh, Brexit and... Uh, 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 make a reality of global Britain, that agenda that we have set ourselves. The first big challenge is just the shift in the global center of gravity from the Atlantic to the Pacific, with the increasing dominance of uh, uh, the uh, rising economies, notably China, of course, but India as well, the ASEAN nations. Uh, and that shift in global focus of economic uh, center of gravity will, over time, of course, mean a shift in the political center of gravity as well, um, and of the preoccupations of strategists in Washington, but in Europe, in Beijing, elsewhere, uh, over the next 20, 25 years, and how that shift in global, uh, the global center of gravity is managed, uh, how it's accommodated, is the biggest national and na global security challenge uh, of our time. It doesn't present as an acute set of problems, therefore it doesn't tend to make the headlines. We probably, none of us, spend as much time thinking about that shift as we should, but it is the profound shift in the global security uh, as well as global economic context. Second, and this is set out in our uh, national security strategy as well, is the uh, uh, revival of state-based uh, state threats. Of course, particularly here in Europe, we focus very much on the revival of the Russian threat. That's both the upgrade of, their, of the conventional military and security uh, uh, capabilities that are uh, uh, deployed uh, uh, to, to contest uh, NATO, uh, more sophisticated anti-submarine warfare, some of the uh, new capabilities that President Putin um, showcased in his recent speech, a more aggressive posture in some of the conventional uh, space, 
But it's also, as General Gerasimov would tell you if he were here, the full panoply of hybrid warfare, information warfare, cyber operations, influence operations, and the use of non-state assets. And one of the big shifts in our national security context, and it's most apparent in thinking about modern deterrence and modern state-based threats, malign state activity, is that the old distinctions between the state and the non-state, between the virtual and the real, um, between uh, uh, the um, uh, 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 armed conflict and uh, uh, hostile operations below the uh, levels of armed conflict, those are no longer anything like as clear as they were um, during the Cold War um, and in previous uh, eras. And indeed, one of my Russian counterparts said to me, you know, it, looks, it looks, this was after Salisbury, it looks as though we're, you know, the UK wants to head back to the, to the days of the Cold War. And I said, no, it isn't. We don't want to do that. Um, and actually, but, but at least the Cold War had one advantage. We all understood the rules. And they, there was a very sophisticated set of rules of the game that were understood, where actions and reactions and responses were carefully calibrated. And one of the big risks in the modern era is that those rules are much less well understood, much less clear cut on both sides in the hybrid era. And therefore, the risks of miscalculation, of an accidental escalation, horizontal and then vertical, are significantly greater uh, than, they, than they were through much, certainly, of the latter part of the Cold War. And that's the second uh, big challenge that we have to face and, and the first big threat. Uh, third is the spillover effects of conflict, instability, weak governance. For Europe, that's uh, almost entirely to our south and east. Uh, and just to caricature it, um, just, to, uh, just to, in, in the interest of time, that's terrorism spilling out of conflicts in the Middle East and South Asia. It's serious and organized crime spilling out of weak governance and corruption in the Balkans and parts of Africa. And it's levels of migration, unmanageable levels of migration and refugee flows, again, spilling out of uh, uh, governance issues, particularly in the next 25 years in sub-Saharan Africa, where uh, many countries are going to struggle to, uh, to grow their economies at the pace at which their populations are growing and at which young people are going to come onto the jobs market and be economically active. And if they can't find opportunities at home, they will start to move uh, uh, elsewhere. Most migration, by the way, African migration will happen within Africa, but some of it, of course, will uh, uh, come, uh, uh, um, uh, come out of Africa into other nations as, uh, uh, as people look to opportunities uh, in Europe. And we've seen some of that over the past few years. Ah, there we go. <laughs> and there we are. Uh, and I told you to visualize a map with lots of graphics on it. Uh, uh, and there we are. And then the, the three big opportunities for uh, global Britain, and I'll be quite brief about these. Um, first, big bilateral relationships. Uh, that's been an explicit part of our, uh, uh, of our strategy and policy since the uh, referendum. So that means maintaining and renewing our relationships with our core allies here in Europe, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, uh, uh, Canada, etc. It means uh, uh, putting, uh, 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 renewing relationships with some of our old friendships, if you like, places where the UK has a comparative advantage, strong historical relationships, the Gulf, Sub-Saharan Africa, Anglophone Africa, South Asia, other parts of the world like that, Japan. And then it also means uh, building new relationships with some of those rising economies I mentioned earlier, uh, in particular the global strategic partnership uh, that uh, we established with China um, during the state uh, visit here and that golden era of relationships, but also um, the ASEAN nations and other uh, countries where the UK has a strong economic and uh, political uh, interest. And so that's the first pillar. The second pillar is our commitment to the multilateral rules-based international order. Now that is under threat, but it is, a, it is something that countries like the UK must put uh, uh, our effort into preserving. It has served us and served the world very well for the past 75 years. It's really important that it continues to serve us as we move into the 21st century and that we extend it into domains in which it is currently uh, not present, notably cyberspace. Uh, a very good book I, reckon, I recommend uh, called The New Digital Era by Eric Schmidt and uh, Jared Cohen, uh, who, are the, uh, who uh, 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 ran uh, Google, uh, talks of the opportunities of the digital era and the leveling uh, effect it will have internationally. But there are two phrases in it that send a chill down the spine of anyone doing my job. One is that it is the 
uh, uh, history's largest experiment in anarchy, and the second is it's the world's largest ungoverned space. Now, those things can sound quite exciting if you're a billionaire in Silicon Valley, but if you're a national security advisor, uh, we all know that ungoverned space and anarchy are places from which um, uh, many uh, 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 threats threat, uh, can uh, uh, emerge. Threat, and so we uh, need to uh, take threat, the rules-based uh, order into threat, cyberspace, uh, and we need uh, to do threat, that uh, with the uh, private threat, sector, because in the end, uh, they are both threat, the pro uh, providers uh, threat, and, in many cases, the regulators of that new threat, uh, domain. Uh, it's a place threat, where uh, battles uh, will threat, be fought, uh, 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 but threat, people also uh, uh, threat, live their lives. And we'll have to regulate it, manage it in a different way to the way we've managed the traditional physical domains, but regulate and manage it, we and then threat, third, uh, the third uh, big uh, threat uh, uh, opportunity uh, threat, uh, um, is uh, uh, to threat, really exploit uh, uh, this threat, country's uh, uh, soft threat, power uh, and uh, influence, threat, and that of countries uh, like uh, uh, threat. Uh, uh, and that's not uh, just threat. Uh, uh, Issues, uh, uh, things like uh, the uh, BBC uh, World uh, Service uh, and uh, uh, others. There's, well, there's some threat, capabilities. Uh, 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 threat, um, it's not just things like the BBC World Service, the British Council, the use of the English language. These are important features for the UK. But it's also connecting with the rising generation throughout the world. People who do care about modern slavery, people who care about plastics in the ocean, people who care about climate change, and the campaigns and efforts that countries like the UK lead and play a leading role in will help us connect with those generations and ensure that the people-to-people contacts of the rising generation cross international boundaries and hopefully preserve the international order. The graph there, by the way, shows that the UK is the only country among the group there, threat, uh, I think one of only two in the G20, uh, uh, to hit the 2% uh, uh, target threat, on uh, defence uh, expenditure uh, uh, and the 0.7% uh, uh, target threat, on uh, 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 international uh, uh, aid threat, uh, expenditure. Uh, 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 and those are not, of course, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the complete, uh, 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 complete uh, uh, summary uh, of hard uh, and soft uh, power, uh, uh, but it's not a bad indicator of the blend of capabilities that the UK is seeking to achieve uh, as we uh, uh, carve out a role for ourselves uh, uh, in uh, uh, this threat, new uh, uh, global uh, era. Threat, uh, and it was really uh, threat, um, uh, uh, using uh, that threat, example, uh, but that underlying threat, thought uh, that informed uh, the work threat, we did on the capability threat, review uh, uh, we conducted this year, threat, the National uh, Security uh, Capability threat, Review, uh, 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 the streams threat, of which are set uh, out threat, uh, in the honeycomb threat, chart uh, 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 to the threat, top uh, right-hand uh, side threat, of uh, uh, that slide. Threat, uh, uh, threat, uh, uh, threat, so that's the fusion doctrine. Those of you, particularly those in uniform, uh, and particularly American uh, colleagues threat, who served uh, in uh, uh, Iraq threat, and uh, Afghanistan uh, threat, will recognize uh, this graphic. Uh, 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 it looks threat, very like uh, the anaconda uh, slide, threat, as it was uh, known, threat, uh, um, uh, developed uh, by uh, General Dave threat, Petraeus, uh, 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 my uh, friend and uh, threat, colleague, uh, uh, and threat, uh, 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 in Iraq, and then threat, applied again in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, threat, and, uh, and of course, uh, threat, goes, uh, its antecedents uh, go uh, all the way back uh, to the 19th century. But essentially, it set out that what we need to do to to threat, achieve uh, all of those uh, goals, threat, and we uh, define national uh, security threat, quite broadly uh, in this country uh, uh, as covering threat, security, uh, economic, uh, and uh, influence uh, goals, uh, threat, is we need to bring together threat, uh, all of the threat, uh, uh, the whole toolbox, threat, all of the levers, uh, not just threat, of national security, uh, uh, threat, but of national uh, capability uh, uh, in order to threat, achieve that broad uh, uh, range threat, of goals, uh, and the principle uh, threat, is set out there uh, threat, on the right-hand uh, side. It's very, very simple in concept. Those of you who've worked in government will know it is phenomenally difficult to organize in practice. Threat. You either try to do threat. everything uh, everywhere threat. with every uh, capability uh, that you have, uh, 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 in which case uh, 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 you end up threat. just uh, uh, in an uh, ever-decreasing uh, circle uh, of uh, analysis, uh, uh, or you default uh, uh, to your threat. comfort zone uh, uh, in which you use uh, uh, the land forces threat. to deal with a land threat, uh, uh, defense uh, to deal with a defense uh, threat, uh, uh, security and intelligence uh, agencies uh, to deal with those threat. threats, uh, 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 the economic uh, departments uh, to do their uh, stuff, uh, foreign uh, office and others to do the influence. And so it's blending that in a practical way that enables us to bring all threat, of those different uh, capabilities uh, threat, together uh, against uh, our core uh, threat, uh, security, uh, uh, threat, economic, uh, uh, and influence threat, uh, interests. And it's just threat, uh, set out uh, there in the wheel. And as you'll see, threat, most of those uh, uh, capabilities uh, uh, are not uh, threat, uh, classic uh, uh, core uh, uh, national security uh, uh, capabilities. Uh, uh, that involves uh, uh, large threat, parts uh, uh, of the rest uh, uh, of government. Threat, uh, 
It also, though, involves large parts of national endeavour out with government, notably the private sector, but of course in a country like the UK where we have some of the best known and most respected international NGOs in the world, the third sector and other elements too. That's how we, sorry that slide hasn't quite worked out, but if you can sort of read the read the words. That's how we take things uh, through our National Security Council now. So putting the fusion doctrine, that concept, into practice means asking a series of questions. And let's set out So first, and again, this is, some of you will recognize the antecedents of this. This is a little bit like the very the old NATO sequence of orders that I first learned about as a junior acting, unpaid, uncommissioned second lieutenant um, uh, when I was at uh, university and discovered that people were rather better at this stuff than me, so I decided to uh, take uh, off a uniform uh, and put on a suit. Uh, 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 but it's a little uh, like that. Uh, what are our interests uh, and objectives? Uh, What's the situation? Uh, 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 in our threat, case, we will try and get some independent uh, uh, assessment of that, threat, uh, uh, using in particular the Joint uh, Intelligence uh, Committee and threat, that apparatus. Uh, 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 What's the outlook? Uh, uh, what are the scenarios? Uh, threat, How could uh, things go well? Threat, How could uh, things go badly? Threat, What's the minimum uh, acceptable? Uh, uh, in government, we don't threat, do enough of that. We tend to say the policy objective is this. Let's make sure all of our capabilities are designed behind threat, that policy uh, objective uh, threat, uh, uh, without realising uh, sometimes uh, that other people threat, get a vote, uh, uh, other interests uh, get a vote, uh, uh, and you can uh, end up threat, being pushed uh, in a different uh, threat in a different uh, direction. Uh, uh, threat, so very uh, important uh, to look at threat, scenario uh, planning uh, threat, and uh, have at least a proportion uh, of your resources uh, threat, uh, policy uh, and effort uh, allocated threat, uh, to uh, preventing uh, the worst uh, outcomes, uh, threat, achieving the minimum acceptable and giving yourself a reasonable chance of achieving a good outcome rather than just focusing entirely on the Pangossian hope that everything turns out threat. Well. Uh, 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 Fourth threat, uh, uh, is what uh, would a threat, comprehensive uh, 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 threat strategy, uh, uh, so threat, fusion uh, doctrine, uh, uh, but in our threat, case, uh, uh, for many of the issues threat, we're dealing uh, with, a comprehensive threat, international uh, uh, strategy threat, uh, look like. Uh, uh, it's very threat, rare uh, that the UK is be, threat, going to be acting uh, uh, entirely on our own. Invariably, uh, uh, we'll, be, we'll be operating, uh, 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 whether in a formal uh, uh, threat, or informal uh, uh, coalition, threat, uh, uh, alliance with uh, like-minded uh, countries, uh, like-minded uh, interests, uh, threat, um, outside uh, government threat, as well, the private sector and so So what would that look like? We should always have a view of that. And then finally, what is our catalytic contribution? What can we do? What assets can we bring to bear threat, to help threat, threat, achieve threat, that uh, uh, comprehensive threat, international uh, approach? Threat, Those of you who've uh, 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 served uh, in places uh, like Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, down, uh, done uh, counterinsurgency uh, work, uh, threat, people uh, who've worked uh, on Somalia, uh, for example, uh, uh, threat, will recognize the kind uh, of thinking uh, that goes behind uh, this. Threat, uh, it applies to bomb deterrence, uh, and it even uh, applies threat, uh, to exploiting uh, some threat, of the opportunities uh, uh, I was talking about earlier. The final question, and that's always the tough political question for those of you who worked uh, in that, uh, uh, is threat, uh, uh, the feedback loop. Threat, uh, uh, um, just threat, ensuring uh, 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 that the resources threat, uh, we're prepared to deploy, threat, uh, uh, the risks threat, uh, we're prepared uh, uh, to take, uh, uh, match uh, the ambitions uh, uh, that we've set threat, out. And we all know uh, threat, of examples uh, uh, in recent uh, uh, history uh, 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 where we've allowed our threat, ambitions uh, to hit, run well threat, ahead uh, uh, of the resources threat, or the risk uh, appetite, uh, threat, uh, uh, and that way, of course, threat, um, uh, we, uh, threat, uh, lies uh, a uh, recipe for failure. So that's the way we now try and bring this doctrine uh, uh, to life at the decision threat, level, at the strategic uh, decision threat, level at our National uh, uh, Security uh, uh, Council. Uh, uh, threat, uh, uh, and then finally, uh, uh, what does all this mean threat, for land for defence uh, uh, and for uh, land forces? Uh, uh, well, there's a few uh, uh, images there threat, uh, uh, of how uh, this threat, applies. Uh, 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 um, and essentially, uh, 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 this, uh, uh, this um, threat, uh, 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 the role of land forces, uh, threat, uh, not just the army, but the role of land forces generally, applies right the way across the spectrum. You have a few, probably rather too many, actually, images there illustrating the role threat, of land forces uh, in uh, uh, projecting uh, threat, uh, uh, Britain's soft power. Threat, There's three uh, images up there. I think threat, probably I would have uh, put threat, fewer than that. Uh, 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 Maybe just uh, the one to the top uh, right, threat, uh, uh, because uh, threat, uh, that, of course, is threat, the best projection uh, of soft power uh, threat, that this country, uh, threat, uh, threat, this country uh, has. Uh, uh, threat, um, but but threat, there's the projection uh, of soft power, uh, the, the, uh, the threat, concept uh, of this country uh, threat, and, uh, and the brand threat, that this country uh, has uh, in threat, people's uh, minds uh, across uh, uh, the globe. Uh, threat, uh, there's then the projection uh, of, uh, at the other end, threat, the very uh, sharpest uh, kind of threat, hard power, uh, whether that's special uh, forces uh, uh, operating uh, as a uh, stiletto uh, in the most challenging uh, circumstances, uh, 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 whether it's uh, um, uh, threat, uh, uh, building mass threat, capability uh, uh, to participate uh, 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 as part of an alliance effort against a traditional peer adversary, whether it's the use um, in a slightly softer way, as we did in the council.
counter, uh, counterinsurgency uh, campaigns uh, uh, of that threat, blend uh, uh, of engagement threat, with the population, uh, 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 threat, but very sharp, uh, uh, hard power threat, when needed uh, 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 against threat, an insurgent uh, 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 threat, adversary. Uh, 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 but it's, threat, it's also uh, other things, uh, threat, support, uh, uh, military support uh, uh, to the civilian uh, 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 threat. Uh, 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 if we threat, face a major uh, uh, terrorist threat, incident uh, uh, in this country, uh, uh, we may well uh, call on uh, 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 the military uh, uh, to support threat, the police uh, uh, um, uh, in securing uh, uh, key uh, uh, locations uh, uh, or in providing threat, capabilities uh, 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 to enable them to pursue an investigation uh, uh, or a hot threat, uh, uh, operation. Threat, uh, uh, the military, uh, the army uh, were involved uh, uh, um, uh, 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 in uh, uh, the protection uh, uh, and securing uh, uh, of the London Olympics in 2012, and that was both the use of hard power, but it threat. A tremendous uh, uh, um, uh, uh, boost uh, to uh, both the uh, image uh, of the Olympics uh, and the image uh, of threat, the army uh, engaging uh, with threat, uh, uh, the uh, civilian threat. Uh, the civilian population. Or it can be areas such as flood relief, uh, disaster relief, as illustrated at the top there, whether at home or indeed overseas, um, working alongside our development agencies uh, and, uh, uh, and the third sector. So when you sit where I sit, what I'm looking for in uh, land forces, and I think what my successors uh, will be looking for in land forces and the politicians and ministers on the National Security Council, is that ability that you've always preserved to be able to react fast and flexibly to almost any set of challenges that arise. It's something that's sometimes slightly humorously referred to as the Heineken test. Those of you who are familiar with the advert, uh, Heineken is the beer that reaches beers that other parts can't reach. Well, that's the Heineken test. Your land forces, the military as a whole, reach parts that no other capability that government uh, has uh, uh, can reach. They can do so fast. People can de be deployed in units, uh, having trained and worked together with high levels of trust between those deployed um, at speed into environments. They train for it. We exercise for it. We seek to equip them uh, for it. And no other capability available to us in the national security uh, sphere, or indeed the national sphere, offers uh, that particular uh, set of uh, qualities. Best employed when employed alongside others, but often employed first and fastest. And the challenge for the rest of us is to ensure that we don't become over-reliant on, on that, addicted to that speed, that flexibility, that sense of purpose, the command and control, and that actually we assemble and choreograph all those other capabilities uh, with speed and effectiveness as well, so that we are able to bring a truly comprehensive or fusion approach to the various challenges, incidents, uh, and operations uh, that we face. And that's a challenge for the civilian side uh, because Whereas on the military side, as I found in Afghanistan, it was possible, it was challenging, with 51 nations involved, it was still possible, the structures were there, to create unity of command, a unified military effort. Uh, it was extraordinarily challenging on the civilian side, where one didn't have that command structure, to create unity of effort through unity of purpose. But we still have to do it if we're going to be effective, otherwise we become over-reliant on the military tool, uh, we use the military tool for things which are most appropriately done uh, by others, uh, and we don't bring that comprehensive approach that is the best chance we have of achieving success, whether it's facing an insurgent challenge, a state-based adversary, or indeed in exploiting uh, many of those opportunities that the truly global Britain we are uh, navigating our way through to, uh, to, uh, to build will, uh, I'm sure, uh, be able to uh, divert. So thank you uh, very much. I hope that made sense and I look forward to your questions. Thank you.